Hi guys, Chris here with the Cubi 10 Ultimate. You can see now that my particular model is running Android, which means, yes, it does support dual boot. And there is a dual boot version coming out, and Cube did release the files a few days ago. Now, I do not recommend flashing your Windows 10 model to dual boot because this actually bricked. I had to crack open the whole case and flash it with a USB EP-ROM programmer, which is a real hassle. And eventually then it worked. But if you're going to do this on your own, you're going to run into trouble and you will break the tablet. But anyway, it has Android on it now. There is no Play Store in the ROM. And the ROM itself is pretty bland, actually. There's hardly any bloat on there, about four applications. And a very kind of stock Android experience with it. But I'm going to use a capture card now and run through just how the ROM is, a bit of gameplay, and then swap over to Windows so you can have a look and see just how well that performs. So let's have a look now. So here we have the Android ROM and you can see that it's rather light and I do like this. It's very much like just a stock Android experience. Now I wish TechLast would take note and do this because their launchers, they use a custom launcher that's very heavy and they pack on a huge amount of bloat. Now I did take a screenshot of when I first turned it on in Android and there wasn't actually a lot of bloat there at all. So we've got about four bloat applications and you can actually uninstall all of them, which is good to see. Now the only benchmark that I've been able to run because I don't have Play Store and I've had a lot of trouble trying to install Play Store, but this is Antutu 6.0.4 score, 62,000. I, I think that's not a bad score considering the chipset. And the performance of the ROM is really good. It's uh, very fast because it's so light. And it does come with this games application there that has a few emulators on it and a few other interesting things that um, some people might like. I haven't actually removed that. I just kept it on there for now at least. But overall, I, I do like the ROM. I'll just show you a quick information about it. So it's running Android 5.1. And the display we can actually set to enable the adaptive brightness or not there is a toggle for that there and the screen will adjust automatically so there is definitely an ambient light sensor in there and the amount of free space we have was around 12 gigabytes for Android which isn't a lot but we do have micro SD card support to put maybe your music files on or whatever I've only got uh, 5.7 free at the moment because I did install a few games, which I will test out now. So some of the games I can't get to run because they want play services. For example, Mortal Kombat. If I try to launch that, it's going to keep asking me. It wants Google Play services, and I can't install that properly. I've just been having so many issues with it. I can't get it to run. So that is not going to uh, run. Actually, I'll just also show you before I start a game is the free available memory we have. Go into apps and then just show you what is running. Uh, you'll see here we've got 3.3 gigabytes of RAM free. That is actually very light. There's literally nothing running on the ROM, which is really good to see. And plenty of RAM there. You could just go crazy multitasking with that much RAM. I mean, top-end devices have that kind of... RAM available to them. So I'll have a look now and see how real racing runs and then the more demanding Modern Combat 5. So we go real racing 3, gonna go straight into a race and we'll see just how well it runs.
So you can see there, the game runs quite smoothly. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem there. So I'll test out now Modern Combat 5. That's a more demanding game. Definitely more demanding than Real Racing 3 here. Now if you've ever seen this game running on Windows, it really just lags out, so I'm interested to see just how well this is. Actually, seems to be running okay, quite a decent frame rate at the moment. Now, this game on Windows is just really poorly optimized. So we can see that one is running just fine. I think it's very playable and the frame rate is quite decent. And I died. So overall I'm quite impressed with the Android side of things. I think the, the ROM is nice because it's light, it's fast and the performance of what games I can test out here are good but the fact that it doesn't have Play Store is quite annoying. Now this is probably due to the fact that the ROM that I flashed over is actually made for the Chinese market. It does have English on there of course being Android you can change the language but uh, when you get this from the likes of Banggood or other retailers you should have Play Store on there already pre-installed. So let's move on now to Windows now to do that there's two ways. You can either click on the boot to windows little app there or you can hold down the power button and then click tap boot to windows. I'm just going to use the app here and now it will shut down and boot over to windows. Okay so over in windows now I did benchmark the internal storage and it's a, a Samsung eMMC drive which is good to see they haven't gone with a cheap brand and those speeds there are reasonably good. Now that write speed's not wonderful, but the Surface 3 that I reviewed about uh, eight months ago actually got write speeds around 40. So compared to that, I mean, it's it's okay. I would like to see a little bit faster. Now it was actually faster when it was just running Windows 10, but I think because now it's got Android, the uh, drive is full of a lot more data. The write speeds have slowed a little there, but the 4K random reads and writes there are actually okay for this type of drive. That is, you know, that this. It's very slow compared to a uh, Samsung 950 M2 uh, drive, for example. They, you know, they're lightning fast, and that is extremely slow. But we're talking about just a, a cheap tablet here. And the uh, device manager quickly show you what hardware we have on board. So there's that Samsung drive. That's a MCG 8GC is the particular model and the network adapter is the same adapter that I see everywhere so it's the Realtek 150 megabits per second and that is only wireless B, G and N so there's no wireless AC, no dual band we should have dual band, I mean it's 2060 only the uh, Xiaomi Mi Pad 2 has dual band so far that I've reviewed and the accelerometer is a Bosch unit nothing really else here that is uh, of interest so the the windows key they did use is legitimate because uh, I did actually back up the key that when I flashed the dual boot bias I lost the embedded um, key that was within the bias but backing it up I managed to activate it and I didn't have any problems with that at all so I did run through some benchmarks this is the Geekbench 3 score Ice Storm Extreme 1.2, Ice Storm Unlimited 
And finally, Cloudgate 1.1. Now these scores, they're all on par really with what the Atom X5 Z8300s can do. Nothing wonderful in terms of performance there, but I mean, it's enough for your basic kind of things you're doing. And you can do a little bit of light gaming, which I will unfortunately show you in another video, otherwise this video would be a little bit too long. So overall, I mean, it's, I think the performance of it is just fine, and I'm really impressed with the build of the tablet so far. I mean, the keyboard is very nice, and I'll just quickly show you that, and the screen as well, without the screen protector, unlike my unboxing video. So I just wanted to point out that the keyboard, I'm really impressed with the keyboard. The build quality of it is is excellent. It's something that I wouldn't actually expect for this price range. Uh, the fact that it has made out of metal on the top, and that rubberized plastic on the rear. It has the two USB 2 ports on there. So if you want full-size USB ports, you have to use the keyboard case because the tablet does not have full-size ports on it. You need to use um, adapters there, which is quite annoying. Now the trackpad, you can see, I mean, it is small. This is a 10.1-inch tablet, so they've only got so much space they can work with. But otherwise, you are getting a lot of keys on there because you get a print screen key. We do have um, insert, delete, and uh, number lock, scroll lock, and they do have the function key there to get your numbers there. So if you want to type like you would on a number keypad, uh, sorry, you can actually do that along here. Um, it's definitely doable. And okay, we do have the left and right mouse buttons. It's not just a gesture only trackpad. The little rubber feet here is a nice touch too. The build quality just is is premium really for what you're getting. Um, and now it docks in and out just like the Asus. Transformer book T100HA that I tested. Uh, there is no latch mechanism, and I prefer it like this actually. It's just magnetic, so as soon as you line it up and slot it in correctly like that, it will fix in there, and you can lift it up with it in there docked. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it. It could probably fall out because, as I mentioned, it's not actually physically latched in there, but it, it works well. Um, just like all of the transformer style docks, we do have that limited angle. That's as far as the screen's going to go back, which I think is about 120 degrees. And tapping, pushing on it, there's a counterweight in here, but and it shouldn't with normal use tap over. There's a little bit of a bounce there. Uh, now, while I have the USB 3 port here, and just to show you too that there's a slight problem with it. Now, if I plug in my uh, adapter here. USB 3, uh, you'll see that, yeah, it works fine, it pops up. Now, when I transfer one of these files over, hopefully this is going to come out, um, you'll see that it's moving quite quickly, but that's only 40 megabytes per second. This drive can support a lot faster speeds there. Um, that could be limited to the right speeds of my um, EMMC drive, but that's not the case. It's only working in USB 2 mode because right now I have a Toshiba 1 terabyte drive. Now if this lights up blue, that's USB 3 mode. If it lights up in white, USB 2. And it's only lighting up in white. So that is definitely one of the negatives of this tablet that I have encountered so far. Otherwise, my first impressions of this uh, Cube iWork 10 Ultimate are very positive. That I am definitely enjoying it, and I say that people are looking for an Asus Transform book, book style tablet, then this is probably the one to get. I'm, I'm going to say it's easy for me to, yeah, to compare the HI10 to this and say that this one's definitely got a better keyboard, but the lack of the full-size USB ports on the side is a bit of a problem. Um, and the battery life is something I didn't cover in their screen capture. Uh, it's actually looking to be around five to six hours, just a rough estimation there. Um, I'd say maybe even more actually, six and a half. It depends really on what you're doing. Now the screen brightness in my unboxing it looked a little bad, but now I've disabled the Intel power saving. I've removed the screen protector that was on the top, the first layer of it and that's a hundred percent it's very bright the screen and I'm not finding it to be a problem uh, I think it's good brightness definitely for uses use indoors it's perfectly fine and lastly I will just mention the speakers we have the side firing speakers and they work okay but they don't have any stereo separation because you have both of the speakers on the right side there which is a little annoying and overall, 
they don't sound the best. I'll just give you a quick demonstration. Now to demonstrate the speakers, I'm just going to use a track that doesn't give me any copyright issues within YouTube. This is why I've selected it. That's 100% volume. Now that is absolutely hopeless, those speakers. Now they sound literally twice as loud in Android for some reason. I'm not sure why. That could be some sort of software problem. Now if I get my Surface Pro 4 with its uh, definitely more premium speakers, you'll hear the difference. So I now play the same track on my Surface Pro 4. There you can hear the difference that those speakers on the Cubi 10, I work 10, sorry, are hopeless. So there we go. Unfortunately, no gaming tests in this video. Otherwise, it's going to be just way too long and long-winded. Thank you for making it this far. And I will be back with a gaming test. So please do check out the playlist for that video if you are interested. And thank you for watching. Bye for now.